Well, today's episode, as you know, it's Friday, and we're going to be reviewing AEW Rampage, which features Hangman Adam Page taking on Wheeler Yuta, and we have, of course, the AEW Women's Championship on the line today, and many other things. But we're also going to find out who levels up on this episode of NXT Level Up. But first things first, we're going to talk about and review GCW's latest event that took place on the 21st. We're talking about Take a Picture. We have some interesting matchups that took place. Not to mention the main event features the GCW World Tag Team titles on the line as Los Macisos put those titles on the line against the East West Express, Nick Wayne and Jordan Oliver. (coughs) And also we got some news updates to tell about what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted WrestleZone. Are you ready? Welcome everybody to Deleted WrestleZone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, let's begin with GCW's Take a Picture that took place in Huntsville, Alabama, I believe. Um, we have a lot of things that, that happened. It first opened up with Nick Gage coming out with a promo, but at the same time, as you know, around the time, this was around when the sad news and more tragic about the passing of Jim and Pug, also known as Jay Briscoe. So they decided to honor him by applying the 10 bell salute. I thought it was real nice of them to do that, which the wrestling community has become more and more well aware of what's been happening and paying tribute to a one-of-a-kind individual. So I thought it was pretty nice. Now, our opening match is an eight-man scramble match. We have Brogan Lee versus Yoya versus Teriyaki versus Donnie Primetime versus Brandon Williams versus Jimmy Lloyd versus Marcus Mather versus Hunter Drake. I thought this match, <coughs> anything could go, anything could happen it was so chaotic. Whew. But I did not anticipate a eight man a, a six way scramble match or a eight way scramble match at all. Because anything happens. But one thing that led to another this match fall into favor by Hunter Drake when he applied the Spanish fly on top of the turnbuckle onto Teriyaki, giving him the win. I thought it was very impressive. But Hunter Drake will be in a in action the next day. Just to let everybody know. Next up, we have a Cabana Man dad taking on Drake Blake Christian. As you know, Blake Christian has with this attitude, all this and that. So basically, anything could go wrong. Seeing that, but we do know that that uh, Cabana Man dad was trying to do whatever he can to not to be um, taken out by Blake Christian until it was too late. Until he applied the stomp on the back of his head. And picked up the win. However, that wasn't done. Once again, Blake Christian with this attitude decided to use a chair on him. Luckily for him, a Hunter Drake came out to the rescue. But of course, Blake Christian is not going to take this too kindly. I'm not sure if those two are involved in the New South versus um, GCW event. But we'll find out. Now, our next match, we have Aries versus Gringo Loco. This is a pretty good match. I have to say two wrestlers. Especially Aries, whose popularity has grown and grown over time. Gringo Loco, the base god, determined to show his Lucha Libre skills. But in the end, it was, of course, a singing powerbomb by Gringo Loco that picked up the win, giving him the W. Next up, we got a very fun match. We have Marco Stunt taking on the 73-year-old wrestler Mike Jackson. I thought this match was a lot of fun because 
we have the youngster versus the old man. <laughs> I thought it was so cool, but anything could happen. However, I did not anticipate, but you could say in this type of match, it's a young man's game. But nope, you have a Walt type veteran who outsmarted the youngster. I'm talking about Mike Jackson. He applied the inside cradle, shocking everyone that he pinned Marco Stunt. Even Marco Stunt was shocked too, but <coughs> that's how it happened. Next match, we have Sawyer Wreck versus Billy Starks. Man, this match was going to be brutal one way or the other because we know that how Sawyer Wreck is. She's a tall-ass woman. She probably can choke you out, choke, slam you through a table or whatever. <coughs> and that's exactly what she did to Billy Starks. She choked, put it through a choke slam uh, through a uh, door, and it was over right from there. I thought it was insane, but it was a good one. Next up, we got the biggest a-hole on the planet, Tony Deppen taking on Adam Priest. Now, you know Tony Deppen how he is. He would do anything to get a win. But in this case, it did not work in his favor. I thought it would because in the way Adam Priest had a little bit more of the same kind of style, technical aspects as Tony Deppen. But in this case, it was a spike DDT onto him that put him down and one, two, three, it was over right from there. So, basically, Adam Priest got <coughs> the W in this one. Next up, we got Cold Radrick taking on Alley Catch. I was surprised how this match was going because I thought everybody would be divided in 50 and 50. No, in this case, people were pulling for, for Alley Catch because she was, like, the one person people want to see the match win. But I was, like, pretty impressed. However... Um, it took a gut wrench power bomb by Cold Roderick to put away Alley Catch and giving him the win. Now our next match, this is two wrestlers I may not have heard of. Um Chris Jen Haim and Corey <coughs> <coughs> Corey Hollis. I don't know who these guys did, but it, I just don't know who they are. But I'll tell you anyway, the uh <sighs> The match in, in favor of this guy, um, Chris Jen, Aim. Um, just put it out there because I don't know who these guys are, to be honest. But it was a very interesting matchup. So, yeah. Now, our main event is the GCW World Tag Team Titles. We have the East West Express, Jordan Oliver and Nick Wayne taking on Los Macizos. Miedo Extremo Ciclopse. I thought this match was pretty awesome because we have seen the how nick wayne and jordan oliver have been so cohesiveness throughout 2022 doing some great work as a tag team we know they had that awesome match with ozzy open and i thought it was pretty impressive but in this case you probably would have thought this would have been their date night to win the tag titles but no it was of course a driver made by um medio extremo onto nick wayne to pick up the win. i thought it was very impressive but one way or the other, we know that Jordan Oliver and Nick Wayne will get back on the tag team title consistency whenever the opportunity rises. So I think that's pretty much it with this. With GCW, let's move on with AEW Rampage. Okay, AEW Rampage. Now, we opened up with Wheeler Yuta versus Hangman Adam Page. Now, keep in mind, this match was set last Wednesday what, during an interview that Hamman Page was doing. Of course, Willier Yuta decided to t call him out <coughs> and try to speak up. But however, the real question is, will Yuta suffer the same fate as what we transpired to see with um, John Moxley? Well, I have to say that John I mean, um, Willier Yuta put <coughs> everything to the max. Onto Hangman Adam Page, and of course, Hangman Page also did the same thing. But once again, it was the Buckshot Lariat that kind of put, <coughs> but see, put this, put the final nail into the coffin to ensure for for Hangman to pick up the win. But however, we'll see what hap happens then. So that is something we are going to pay attention to. Now. Ricky Starks and Action Andretti, as you know, they're not happy with the results of what happened this past Wednesday. So they're saying that 
Jericho didn't get the job done. How can you say yourselves that you won while you let a baseball bat? So basically, the feud between the JSA versus Starks and Andretti <coughs> is still going on. So we'll see what happens then. <coughs> As you know, recently we've been seeing Eddie Kingston, who's been acting up. As you know, we've been seeing the cryptic messages that have been taking place due to the House of Black. So it looks more like Eddie Kingston is finally going to give in. I don't know if that's really what he's saying, but we just got to wait and see when it happened. Our next match, we have Jeff Jarrett, J uh, Jay Lethal, and Satinum Singh, along with that pip squeak, uh, Sanjay Dutt, taking on the best friends, Trent and Chuck, teaming up with Dan House. And now, you probably thought this match was going to be a lot of fun. It also did, but in the process, basically, as you know, they, um, they, uh, <coughs> they used the Globin Award that they stole from Paul Walker Hausen, Hauser from uh, back on Rampage on the day they went to L.A. And, of course, at the end of it, they're saying they're not returning it because they say they are the one that won it. Sooner or later, they're going to get it back. Sooner or later, Paul Walker Hauser will get that uh, medal, back, that award back one way or the other. But they think they got away clean, but they did not. Now, we do see a very interesting interview that took place this past Wednesday on Dynamite. As you know, Ruby Soho shows up. However, while she was about to say something, Britt Baker shows up. Now, as you know, we're seeing this interesting division of the of the women's division, what's been going on. We're seeing the entire the, the locker room is being divided. You got the homegrown wrestlers versus the wrestlers who came from up other places, such as Tony Storm and Soraya. However, Ruby Soho, as you know, she is categorized as one of those wrestlers that comes from another location. But Britt Baker is starting to see her value instead. But Ruby Soho doesn't trust her, doesn't like her. So the way I would see it, I feel we're going to see a three-way war between like, the homegrown ones versus the, the ones that came from other sides. And then there's the ones who are in between where they're like, we're not siding with anybody. We're going to do things our way. And that, I feel like that's Ruby Soho. I think she could be that one leader that's going to lead that group in particularly. Now, we do see a very interesting match by uh, Powerhouse Hobbs where he takes on Tony Mudd. You can guess this one ended with a spine buster. That always been his signature, so we'll see what happens then. Then we see a uh, very interesting interview with uh, Renee with Dustin R uh, Rhodes, who we haven't seen for quite some time. We know he had a very intense month, uh, you know, of course, with the passing of his mom and all this. But we also um, see Swerve, who cannot stand the fact that someone has been given a spotlight. So Dust Rhodes has been telling him to back away. But of course, Swerve, he's not going to back away because he feels it's unfair that someone's getting the spotlight instead of him. But <coughs> we're going to see how this one goes down. Now, another interview, this time with Jade Cargill and Layla Gray. Then, of course, Red Velvet along with Kara Hogan. Apparently, they're looking at this, that Kara Hogan, they're looking at Layla Jade as she's nothing but a, a puppy who's followed Jade Cargill around. But Red Velvet will be challenging her and hoping she be the one to break her record. Now, we know they have faced off before, but now it's going to be interesting. Now, our main event, we have the AEW World Women's Championship, Emi Sakura versus Jamie Hayter. Now, these two have history. <coughs> As you know, Jamie Hayter has lost to Emi Sakura before years ago. But this is more like now that she's the champion, she's going to rectify from that loss. I thought this match was, was pretty incredible. You know, basically, there was no hold backs. I mean, Emi Sakura's chest was watching. And also, I saw this on Twitter. Everybody from Got to Move and Choco Pro were watching this at the at the Chocolate Square, and I thought, hmm, that's pretty cool. But the match was incredible; I loved it. But it took a ripcord lariat by Jamie Hader to retain the title. So, obvious question is, who is next? As Jamie Hader saying that she is a fighting champion, but we're still waiting for the moment until Jamie Hader breaks away from Britt Baker and have a feud. That's what we're still waiting on. 
I think that's pretty much it right now with AEW Rampage. Let's move on with NXT Level Up. Okay, so who levels up on the next NXT Level Up? So let's get started. We have Dante Chen taking on a new guy who is making his NXT Level Up debut. Kale, um, Kale Dixon. <coughs> it was a pretty good match. Now, Kale Dixon, I'm not going to take anything away from him. He did a very good impression, but I'm still getting to know him. But Dante Chen, as I, you know, I have talked about him a few times. How he has dealt with, of course, being the first ever Singapore wrestler to come to a WWE ring. But, however, it was Dante Chen who walked away. With, I forgot what he calls his finisher, but it was a real good one. But enjoyable. Now, during an interview by Kelly Kincaid, she interviews <coughs> Lola Vice. Uh, you may know her as an MMA fighter, but now she's making her <coughs> her debut, even if it's an NXT level up. She takes on Danny Palmer. I thought this match was pretty good between Danny Palmer and Viva Lola Vice, due to the fact there's a lot of uh, difference between them. You know, v Lola be being an MMA fighter. But it was, of course, um, Dale, Danny Palmer with a jackknife that helped her win the match. Yeah, the jackknife was, I thought it, it was not, to me, it feels like it was just too simple, but it did its job. <coughs> now, our last match, we have Oro Mensa versus Scripps. I thought this match was incredible. Like, a lot of uh, spots in this, we're still getting to know who Scripps is. I know many of us know who that is behind Scripps, but we're not going to do it but it was pretty good i liked it you know it did showed how scripts was able to beat oramensa but <coughs> it ends pretty well so scripts does this there was like a counter by oramensa stuff but it countered back you know i thought it was crazy but a lot of counters but it was pretty good but it was scripts who walked away this time with the victory <coughs> i think that's pretty much it with this let's move on with news updates okay welcome for our news updates as you know, this was reported by PW Insider and Dave Meltzer. As you know, WWE is still dealing with the return of Vince McMahon. Apparently, certain things have changed with Vince. As you know, he is working in the offices to work on the sale. So basically, but however, Meltzer noted that he can confirm that Vince McMahon has changed. Now, he has noticed in the past how Vince McMahon has <coughs> extremely worked early in the day and then extremely works late but now he's not doing that so he's basically not that same Vince McMahon that <coughs> people presume but now we don't know what the change is about but we do know he is working on the sale but we'll be continuing more on Vince what he's been up to since his return Beyond Wrestling has announced for an upcoming match we have the best bros May Shruga and Valinaki they face off J um Jay Lyons and Midas Black, the main event. This is going to be a fun match to enjoy. I really think it's going to be good. But however, on a note, this will be the last match for the U.S. tour by the best bros to see together. We know that they've been talking that may be heading back to Japan. I'm looking forward to see them back on Choco Pro, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So, <coughs> looking forward to this match. Garden State Pro has announced for their upcoming event on the 3rd of February. We're going to have a bit of a couples match. We're going to have couple number one, Akira, teaming up with the Russian Dynamite Masha Slamovich, his girlfriend. They take on the married couple, Speedball, Mike Bailey, and Vita Scott. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Two couples facing off each other, so that's going to be fun. Now, for <coughs> the Black Label Pro event, Love Stinks, that takes place on the 18 of February, we're going to have a four-way match. Carlos Romo versus Isaiah um, Moore versus Lasaya versus Tree Diaz. 
And also, <coughs> the Wrestling Revolver has announced for their drip event that will be taking place on the 4th of March. Rocky Romero returns. I'm looking forward to seeing him. However, relation to Wrestling Revolver, <coughs> <coughs> they had a huge announcement that they're going to have a working relationship with Oregon-based promotion prestige so that means we're gonna have for the drip event alex shelley who is the current pro uh, wrestling revolver remix champion and the prestige champion he'll put both titles on the line so this is going to be interesting to see <coughs> now for our final update gleet has announced for their upcoming events taking place real soon so this is what they have February 12th, G Pro Wrestling version f f uh, 43. On February 15th, G, uh, uh, G Pro Wrestling version 44. This is where Unagi will be facing Yukari Hosogawa. G Pro Wrestling version 5 on the 23rd of February. Then on the, on the 7th of March, Lidet uh, UWF version 4. Then we got G Pro Wrestling version 46 on the 15th of March. And then finally, on the 21st of March, G Pro Wrestling version 47. So, <coughs> so mark that on your calendars. This is going to be a very interesting thing to watch. I'm looking forward to the one uh, with Unagi, but we'll see what happens then. I think it's time to call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. We got Choco Pro for 288, I believe. And then of course, um recently I did see that there's gonna there's been some Gambari Pro events. I'll be covering that. But also I think we got Nemesis from New, from New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong. I'm looking forward to that. So there'll be other things. I'm gonna try to wing it for the Saturday event, so we'll see what happens. But for now, I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you. I do so. Goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.